Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Teacher Cast podcast. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making Teacher Cast your home for professional development. Today, we are not talking about technology at all. I repeat, we are not talking about technology. In fact, no technology is going to be mentioned at all today on the show. What am I talking about? Is this the right episode? Absolutely. Last year, we had an opportunity to meet a great company called MC Squares. It is a fantastic company that's using whiteboard technology. Up oh, there, I use that word in a very, very evolutionary way. We're here to have a fantastic time today. We've got Anthony on from MC Squares. We're going to be learning three different things that you and your classroom can be doing with whiteboards and how MC Squares can be a part of your classroom technology. Technology. There, I said it again, guys. I don't know about this one. There's, of course, several great ways that you can reach out and be a part of this and all of our shows. We want to know how you guys are doing out there as we go through our school year. Please check us out over at teachercast.net slash voicemail and let us know how you're doing. My guest today is the co-founder of MC Squares, returning to the TeacherCast podcast, Anthony Franco. How are you today? Welcome to the show. I'm doing good. How are you today? Thanks for having me. I am doing wonderful. And I got to tell you, for the last year, people have been looking at TeacherCast and going, what is that thing behind <laughs> your head? And uh, for anybody that's been watching the show in the background here, I've been having this this, this whiteboard with, with my initials on it. And, and that is an MC Square. Talk to us a little bit about these things that I have back here. What are MC Squares? Well, MC Squares are handheld dry erase tablets that easily snap on a wall to create larger collaborative systems. Um, what you have back there is what we call version one. It's, uh, it's this, uh, it, it has these, these transparent dry erase tops and they have templates that go inside of it and they snap over um, a system and then they snap on a wall using a, a mounting bracket. And we just launched on Kickstarter uh, version two that's taken into a lot of the teacher and customer feedback that we've had to make them easier to pry open and 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 work on existing dry erase boards um, rather rather than having to put our mounting bracket on it. So we we've we've uh, we really kind of geeked out on whiteboards again and and leveled up the initial MC square. Now I see you have a bunch of those uh, version twos behind you. Yep. They look spectacular. Now we started off the show today by saying this is not technology. W would you? Would you agree with that? Is are whiteboards considered technology? Well, I, so uh, my background is uh, software development. I, I ran a, a, a fairly large software development agency uh, prior to this. So wh when I hear technology, I, I think screens. And so I, I'm fine with uh, uh, calling this an analog product and not using the word technology. I, I'm I'm running away from tech uh, and and getting into more how people engage one on one instead of what we're doing here, which is screen communication. And so, yeah, I'm fine with not using the word technology when talking about MC squares. Well, when I'm looking at this, I, I, people say, well, what do you do with it? And I, I'll start off the bat. I'll give you my favorite way of using it. It is the perfect teaching tool for my, this is the first podcast I'm going to say this, my almost four-year-old toddlers. I, I give them the marker. We practice our letters. I, I, I have a few of them here. Um, and so I lined up all the kids and some of them are getting it and some of them are just using it as like a, a, a drawing device, but we're going to get there. It is the perfect device for anybody teaching young kids. There is no trash. It's self clean up. You can put it in the dishwasher, by the way. I don't know if you guys knew that one, but, I didn't know but, that. <laughs> but they're absolutely fantastic. And at least with version one, when you turn it over, you get a Lego board on the back and that was yep. awesome. T yep. Talk to us a little bit about the differences again between version one and version two here, because you said version two is going to be shipping soon, I believe, right? Yeah, so we're, we're actually manufacturing them now and shipping them in a couple weeks, uh, starting beginning shipping in a couple weeks. So we're really close to, uh, to replacing version one. We, we did lose um, the standard toy brick system on the back. We just, again, custom, customer research showed that um, our customers and teachers and kids were just not using them that much. So instead, we, we created a what we call a four-in-one. So it still has this template system on the inside and instead of the leg uh, instead of the, the toy brick system on the back we put a we put a, a black back so you can use it as a dry erase tile like like you could on an mc square this is also dry erase and you can flip it around and make it a liquid chalk wet erase board and then you take this completely out and you can snap it and layer 
MC square ideas on top of one another. So they layer and stack on top of one another. So you can start having students create something on one tile and then stack another one on top of it. That's pretty neat. Is that friction based or is that magnets? So these are magnets. These are um, rare earth magnets that snap. These will mount on any magnetic dry erase board and then these mount on top of each other and stack. So any current dry erase board, magnetic board, whatever you have, you could yeah. just put this thing right up on top of that. That's yep. pretty neat. Yep. So let's take a look at how teachers are using this, right? Because I, sure. I, I come up with my own, like it's I, I like the term toddler tech. But but what what are what are you seeing <laughs> teachers using MC squares for? So um and, and it depends on the grade level. Um, so w when we're looking at um, uh, elementary school and middle school, teachers are are using the drawing guides quite a bit, like you are, where they where they either use ours or they they print out their own and slide them inside of an MC square, and you, and basically print out. Um, think of uh, drawing guides as guided learning. So uh, they're they're um, pieces of paper to guide discussion and learning, and so they put them underneath, and then students get to write their answers or think on top of a, a template. Um, and then when you get into uh, higher middle school or high school, um, and I should mention that teachers hand these out to individual students at their desk. And it, um, uh, the kids get to think independently at their desk without having to shout things to the front of the classroom. And and then once they're completed with their ideas or their lesson, they can bring them back up to the wall. And that's the whole point of MC squares. Wait, wait, wait when you get into, are, are you ahead? telling me that with a whiteboard, you could have creativity, collaboration, communication, and critical thinking? Uh, are you writing my website copy for us? Because that's <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what, the, the, obviously, one-to-one um, -one schools and schools with lots of technology, that technology serves a really great purpose, access to content. But it you lose the awareness of the, of the team or the group by being sucked into the screen. So what MC Squares do is they, they allow you to think individually, um, but also think in a team environment. So sometimes students will do this one-to-one, -one or, or they'll have a group setting, a small group setting, where groups will have individual MC Squares and write down their ideas as they're, they're creating their geography plan or their science plan or how cells transport uh, proteins between one another and then they'll bring that back up to the wall so that's more high school where they get into group environments and then also high school and even higher learning there these are um, fabulous in like maker spaces or libraries where you want um, uh, people to think uh, in project-based terms and move uh, ideas across across as you're looking behind me across a, a a timeline. So I would imagine, and I'm looking for those of you who are maybe in your car, and this is an audio show for you. If you can imagine all of these squares connected to each other, I would imagine here, Anthony, this is a great way to teach coding and programming, right? Because you've got all of these little blocks, and a lot of coding right now is block based. You could easily come up with some kind of a scratch based, you know, or you could take the little scratch blocks, blow them up, print them out, and put them on individual MC squares, and you could teach block-based coding or i mean really it's endless on that but i'm just looking at a big huge coding programming stem class behind you yeah the uh, stem is definitely a, an area where um uh we're seeing a lot of traction and, and in addition outside of the education outside of education settings mc squares are extremely popular in in actual development uh shops so if you know anything about development you know you've heard of agile and scrum development and those development teams, those coding teams, use MC squares to build large systems and carve those systems up into smaller chunks to, um, to make them easier to understand and, and code over time. Now, as far as obtaining one of these things, where does somebody go? We, uh, can we order them from your website? Are they on a, another online company? Where do we go to pick one of these up? Yeah, so um, right now, these are like half off on Kickstarter. Um, and that goes to the end of the month, end of October. And then you can just go straight to mcsquares.com. And then we are developing um, relationships with much larger uh, distributors of education and office products. Um, so look for these also um, in from your supplier. If, you, if you're at a school, 
um, look for them or ask for them from your standard supplier, and they'll very likely have them in 2018. You know, I got to tell you, I've been using one of these MC squares now for the, the better part of a year. I use them with my three-year-olds. I use them with my 12th graders. And I also find when I'm writing blog posts, I just use it to, to jot down some things. They're absolutely fantastic. And I love that more and more teachers are using them in the classroom for curricular stuff. It is one of those tools that, you know, if you have a student that isn't necessarily technology focused. Maybe they have an IEP. Maybe they have some some special requirements for their learning environments. This stuff is absolutely perfect, wouldn't you say? There's, there's no learning curve to dry erase. <laughs> it, it, you, you hand a student a pen, you hand them a dry erase tile, and, and they're off and running. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, we have teachers replacing their smart boards or their Promethean boards with the dry, uh, an MC square wall. They're just... E- they don't break down. Um, they're very durable. Uh, they're easy to learn, and they uh, they offer more of a collaborative environment. Um, and even we just did, conducted a, a study with DU locally here in Colorado, and they found that um, M- MC squares in classrooms compared to M- uh, classrooms without MC squares lift pa- lift test scores by forty percent. Wow! And they lift passing grades by over three hundred percent. And we we actually had to conduct reconduct the study because we didn't believe that number, but both studies have shown 40% lift in, in test scores and 340% lift in passing grades. It's incredible. What is the, uh, the I, I got to ask you this question here, Anthony, but what, what, what is the cost? Uh, so we sell them in systems and generally speaking to put uh, a, a system in a classroom of 32 students is around $2,800. So they, they sell for $85 a tile and that $2,800 includes uh, 32 MC squares and an entire uh, magnetic dry erase board. So it's it's a very large system. The website is mcsquares.com. It's spelled just how it's spelled. And of course, I would highly <laughs> recommend check them out. You can go to mcsquares.com slash YouTube or slash Facebook. You can find them on Twitter at mc underscore squares. Uh, lots of great stuff. I mean, I got to say, Anthony, your stuff has certainly been uh, helpful uh, with my kids. And certainly as they get oh, older... You. Um, we're using it more and more. In fact, I got to tell you, when my kids are in between meals and they're all at the table, they're there with their dry erase board. So it's kind of cool stuff. So I want to say thank you guys out there. As we started off saying, this wasn't a technology show. And I think you guys can agree it kind of wasn't, but it might have been. We want to know what you think. Are dry erase boards technology? Can you use them in an ed tech classroom? Are MC Squares an ed tech company? Hmm, there's a question for him. We'll have to ask him that one on the next time he goes around. We want to know what you think and how you can use MC Squares in your classroom. You can, of course, check them out over at mcsquares.com and you can find us on teachercast.net. And please reach out to us on Twitter over at teachercast. On behalf of everybody here on the Teachercast Educational Broadcasting Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Keep up the great work in your classrooms, everybody, and continue sharing your passions with your students.